we are actually in, sitting in here and looking at Oracle. But you see, today we are going to look at something different. We are going to leave the frontiers of Oracle and we will go and study other elements that are very, very critical for Oracle to thrive. All right. Now, we talked about, last week, like we said, we talked about the database. But there was something we didn't talk about, and we're going to talk about it today. This database lives somewhere. It lives on an operating system. What am I trying to say? Without an operating system, you, you, you won't even be able to install Oracle. All right, so we're going to look at operating systems. Then we've also started a little by looking at networking. So we're going to look at how these two elements plugs into the database. We're going to have a little, um, we're going to follow, we're going to make use of an operating system called Linux. Because uh, everybody here has Windows. At least everybody here knows how to use Windows. True or false? Yeah. Is there anyone here who doesn't know how to use Windows? Just raise your hand very briefly. Okay, there's nobody. So that's good news for me. So I don't want us to go back to learn what we already know. Because the entire curriculum and the class program, or rather the training, is going to be done on Linux. Because Windows is very easy to use. So I figured, well, let's go to the domain that is much more harder. So it's easier for us on the domain that is easier. So by the time we're done installing Oracle on Linux, and then you come back to install Oracle on Windows, you know, you'll see that the, uh, Windows is very easy and straightforward. So it's better we go the way of Linux, and then you can go, and go to Windows. Because if we go through Windows, and then you go for an interview, and you're asked to install Oracle on Linux, and you say, what's up? My teacher didn't teach us how to install it on Linux. You know, and then they probably ask, who is that teacher? <laughs> anyway, that's just why I decide. So, um, one of the reasons why we're going to be using this tool, Putty, is because we're going to connect to our Linux operating systems. It's actually up and running. Like I said, we have a network. Now, okay, let's take it from the network side. So, we'll go from network, then we'll go to operating system, then we'll come back to database. Sorry. Say that. We already said that the network allows us to share resources, right? So now, and we've talked about where the, the resource machine, right? And then we've talked about the destination machines, which is where your own machines come in, right? Now, I'm just using less technical terminologies. If we decide to use IT terminologies, this machine where you got this resource is usually referred to as a server. And your machines that we're connecting to this guy to copy are referred to clients. All right? Now, in the IT world, one of the first and the major architecture that is in use and is still in use is the client server architecture. Meaning, in the client server architecture, you have a machine that connects to a server. Machine is client, and the guy you're connecting to is the server. All right, now we have about four servers. We have a server called MIT Serv01. All right, it has two IP addresses. Okay, um, no, I, I, will not, I, will, I don't want to list it there. 10 and 11. Now everyone in group one will connect to 10, 10.100.50.10. 10 you're not connecting yet, but if you're in group one, just note your IP. If you're in group two, you'll be connecting to 11. But the machine is MIT sub 01. Now there's another server. It's MIT 0. One seven. All right. Group three will be connecting to MIT zero one seven. Please use the IP. Don't use the names because I don't think I configured the 
your machines are not configured to connect to see by, by, by with names but they will see with ips all right and then the third server that we have is mit 018 and that will be for people in group four so you just connect to mit 018 but what i just want us to understand is everybody in here is a client and they're connecting to a server now i'm sure the next question you're going to ask is how do you connect to the server now i told you to copy a file called putty right if you've copied it to your desktop or anywhere you've copied it to please help me double click the file just work with him all right if you've double clicked you would see you'd see yeah you would have seen a gra graphical user interface you haven't double clicked just hold on there yeah just hold on i want everybody to to have that screen this is how it works um we have a client server network right and we have a software called putty that is already on our screen waiting for us now let's just hold on with putty let's come back here we have a network client server the client knows the details to get to the server now let me let's go out of the technical class would you give someone that you don't know the keys to your house no. exactly so to prevent that from happening you don't keep your key lying around right you put it in your pocket and it stays with you now just for you to be fully certain that you no one will also have access to the key you put the key somewhere and then you lock it up right now that's what a firewall actually does let me just put it here the firewall sits as a layer before you get to the server it's actually on the server but it's a layer that the way it, it operates it, it stands out as a layer that or a gatekeeper so before you get into the system it would want to know who you are this is the point the point is what the firewall does is it prevents you people that you not given the right to get to your machine so if your firewall is powered on nobody can get to your machine but the disadvantage is that you also cannot get to other people's machine so it's like the firewall can be very let me look for the word maybe a stubborn gatekeeper it prevents you from no it, it doesn't allow anyone to come in but it also doesn't allow you to go out that's why you notice that when you want to go outside what the firewall what the essence of that is actually security he's trying to be on the safe side he wants to make sure that when you go outside you don't expose the system for hackers and viruses to come in but since we're, sh we're all sure that this is a safe, safe network that's why we could go ahead to disable the firewall if he restarts his machine the firewall will come back on right so that's basically where the firewall comes in so let's begin to understand that when you have a network you might need to put in a layer of security on the network to prevent unauthorized access how would you feel if you bought internet access right and you pay maybe ten thousand naira every month and then you realize that all your neighbors are making use of your internet you know they'll greet you more than they they'll, they'll, they'll greet you more than they used to greet you before ah cj this guy you know you know something is wrong maybe at the end of the month when you go to collect a browsing bill you get fifty thousand naira ah barely use this thing and the time you start they, maybe if you if you tell the um, cyber company to actually print you a bill then you now see machines that that that, that doesn't bear your machine name going to yahoo.com going to you know downloads.com downloading files that even you do not even make use of you know someone else is actually con so to guard against that that's what the firewall actually does it has a good reason you understand it's only that he can if he's too security conscious which is something that you also set up yourself then it prevents everybody from getting in so so that's what the firewall actually does.